one second good afternoon all and welcome good afternoon thank you, thank you for joining us today's webinar wednesday wisdom my name is ramiz vora from north star i have a 10 years work experience in the field of transformer north star is engaged in providing technical and business consulting services related to technology we are doing product assessments as a third party inspections operations management plant engineering supply chain management manufacturing and oems moreover we are providing field services support to end users like erection testing commissioning and troubleshooting of transformer we have conducted more than 60 webinars online since from the corona pandemic i am very happy to see you in this webinar i hope you will find the program interesting and as per your expectations previously we have conducted different programs and covers various topic related to transformers today we are presenting webinar wednesday wisdom on this wednesday topic is warranty period woes of transformers how to overcome some approaches today's webinar presented by mr rajiv shivgaonkar he has 27 years work experience in the field of transformer he has done mtech in energy from molana azad national institute of technology bhopal also he is a chartered engineer and energy assessor he is a managing partner of north star just a little informing you before we get started if you have any question during the presentation please type them into the chat box we will have time for question and answer sessions at the end i request to all you keep your mics and videos off now without further ado we will turn the time over to the mr rajiv shivga rajiv sir please start the presentation thank you ramiz and good evening to all the participants who have took pain to uh, register and then uh, attend the program uh, today's topic is uh, a little bit uh, different we can say uh, but it is also very important when i started my career somewhere in 1990 92 that time a typical warranty period used to be 12 months or 18 months and uh, which is uh, now it is reaching to 6 years and the talks uh, unconfirmed i am not giving a news but unconfirmed uh, informations my marketing friends in the forum today might be knowing better than me that it is likely or it is uh, efforts are being made to take it to even 10 years okay but uh, why it should worry as such because uh, the if my product is good and uh, it is used rightly then uh, there should not be any uh, concern whether warranty period is small or big but uh, in our country situation is uh, really different where we see that uh, because uh, transformer is the most uh, one of the costly equipment in the power system so a big stake is there on it so warranty period is a, a big uh, you can say uh, point of worry especially to the transformer manufacturers because if uh, transformer fails then the onus comes on the oem and uh, of course the related cost also has to be borne by them <clears throat> so uh, this was the the basic reason that i thought that let me uh, touch upon this aspect of transformers which bothers all of us and what at all can be done to reduce the concern and the impact in terms of money on the especially on the transformer manufacturers of course when a transformer fails either within warranty or out of the warranty it is a big disturbance to the user 
and uh, nobody wants that any equipment not only transformer should fail during any point of service so that's why this topic is there today so uh, before we start as our uh, as per our standard format a little bit about nostar the nostar is a consulting and a services organization uh, primarily into transformers in consulting we uh, have different type of uh, supports to transform manufacturers as well as uh, users of the transformer starting from the manufacturing technology to even business process improvement business process improvement activities is not only limited to transformers but it is also applicable for the similar kind of product ranges uh, which are like engineered to order like transformer so uh, we support manufacturers in uh, improving the delivery performance then uh, inventory reduction which is a big concern productivity especially in engineered to order manufacturing setup productivity is a big challenge because uh, many things depends upon the main power availability and scale so we help our customers in improving on that aspect we also help in factory designing starting from the plant layout to acquisition of the uh, equipments and also to the trial run and ultimately pilot production from that factory we also help our customers in uh, quality improvement right up to vendor end then we also support in design and cost optimization for various type of special transformers like file winding our first core natural and synthetic ester furnace and solar transformer our second uh, area of uh, activities it field services where we uh, take up uh, erection testing and commissioning of transformers including supervision and actual uh, erection testing also we have our crews and our people who take up those activities we do take up troubleshooting on site repair rectification restoration then also failure investigation diagnostics and also we provide different spares starting from a small breather to the uh, uh, oip bushings or rip bushings to our customers at a very reasonable price our third activity is uh, uh, knowledge sharing uh, which uh, which is what we are doing in this forum after the onset of lockdown we have resorted to webinar uh, model and uh, we have been conducting webinars since all since the month of may and uh, many webinars we have conducted and since almost uh, two months this is the uh, uh, our ninth episode today eighth episode today where we are uh, conducting similar kind of webinars and we are trying to share our understanding with the audience <clears throat> then we are providing uh, power and industrial solutions innovative and technological uh, technology based which are not run of the mill type of things uh, like uh, fire prevention of uh, power panels uh, this is from streamer electric uh, this is a solution uh, basically to avoid occurrence of the fire event means when, when you apply this system into your into your panels uh, the fire will not happen the situation of the fire will not come so prevention is little bit next step to this solution so all these solutions are like that which are uh, innovative and uh, quite useful to the uh, uh, users uh, about me i have already been introduced i am uh, m tech from mnit bhopal and i have now 27 plus years experience all in and transformers in different areas my last assignment was with rekem rpg where i was general manager and operation head of their transfer factory in pune so today's agenda is uh, we will first talk about uh, what do we understand as far as when uh, the factors like warranty cost we are concerned the starting point is the product quality so we will spend a little bit time on that 
then uh, when we say uh, warranty zero warranty failure then indirectly we are talking about the world class quality and what are the challenges for world class quality that we will talking about and then we will come to our main pro main part of the program which is warranty period works and uh, uh, different approaches what we feel can be applied uh, to come out of those situation we are discussing that and at then we will be talking little bit about our uh, solutions which we have just discussed in a bit detail and then we will go to question answer session and then we will close so talking about uh, the quality person uh, let us go a little bit uh, to the theory of uh, uh, the quality definition so iso we are all very fond of iso and uh, we all are iso practicing people so as per iso uh, it is very very clear that it is the totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bear on its ability to satisfy stated or implied needs so this is a bare minimum requirement of a quality from a product now various quality gurus what they talk about uh, quality so let us see ishikawa what he says ishikawa is a gentleman uh, who has given a very good quality tool to us which is we call as fishbone diagram of a root cause analysis so mr ishikawa what he says about quality it, it is a broad concept what he says it is a broad it is not a narrow it is a broad concept that is not limited to only product okay it includes all the parameters all the influencing factors like people processes and all other aspect of organization even the finances also because what he what he tries to convey here that quality per se is not the uh, outcome of the activities of quality assurance department but every small speck in the organization contributes for the quality of the product so rather excellent quality of the product is an outcome of the combined effort of everyone and every department of the organization that's what is species analysis so then what uh, another guru mr deming w deming he says that uh, he totally gives a different perspective to this quality definition is that who is the judge of the quality means who is looking the looking at the term quality for me as a manufacturer quality would mean something different and for you as a user quality would be totally different so quality can be defined only in terms of the agent okay it is not something which is absolute it is always relative it is always a kind of perception that for me a good quality means something else and for somebody else that excellent quality would mean definitely some something else so that's what mr deming said deming has given us a very important quality tool which we call pdca that is plan do check and act and this this tool pdca uh, loop can be applied almost any problem solving uh, be it related to our personal lives also So it is such a wonderful tool which Mr. Deming has given. Now, next guru of quality, Joseph Joran. Uh, we know Mr. Joseph Joran well. Uh, he he says that he looks at the quality as from the customer angle. That quality means that a product meets customer needs, leading to customer satisfaction. so and he also says that quality also means all of the activities in which a business engages in to ensure that the product meets customer needs again he is reflecting something what mr ishikawa is saying about quality that all the activities in the business which is being happening are leading to the satisfaction of the customer needs and how well we are doing that is depending on quality level now most most uh, precise definition of uh, quality is given by mr crosby and that's what is the topic of the discussion today that quality is measured by the price of non conformance okay looks little bit uh, little bit narrow approach but ultimately that's the fact what price we are going to pay for the defects we are passing to the customer of the issues which are coming in the transformer at the site what price we are paying and that is what is the poor cost of quality or copq 
and one component of COPQ is warranty cost or expenses incurred on the transformer once it leaves the factory and it is working during the warranty period. Okay, so Mr. Crosby has put it in very uh, crystal clear terms about what we mean by the cost of the quality. Now, why to improve quality? Why it is needed? So this is uh, by Mr. Juran. He says that if you are not improving, if the improvement is not being done, then you are generating constant waste. Waste in terms of resources. All your resources are getting wasted and money is a very important part of it, but your people are getting wasted and your practice is getting wasted and many other type of things you are generating waste. So when you are not improving, you are generating the waste and you are wasting your valuable resources. Okay. When you move from this stage to the improvement, you, when you initiate the improvement initiatives into your uh, facility, then your cost will increase. Okay, during improvement phase, the cost will be high because you have to take some tough decisions, you have to hold on uh, the defective things, you have to put a put down that the defect will not be allowed to the downstream of the production process. So all these tough decisions will cost you dearly. But once you have achieved the improvement, then your margins improve and whatever expenses or I would say investment you made during improvement phase will be recouped. That's what Mr. Juran says and that's why the quality improvement is necessary. Okay, so if not, then what are the profit drainers? So this is a bucket which is leaking. So like profit leaks from the organization and uh, futile efforts are being made to plug the leakages by putting the bandits. So the approach is wrong. So what are the different profit uh, drainers? Number one is inventory obsolescence, especially in, in uh, industry like transformer, which is uh, the product which is engineered to order, means it is, which is designed as per the customer specification. Inventory obsolescence is a big, big problem because of the changes in the design, because of the changes in the customer requirement, inventory becomes obsolete and that is a big waste because you cannot have that inventory at the same price at which you purchase and you are not adding any value to that inventory. Second profit drainer is low inventory turnover rate, means you are procuring the material, keeping with you, but you are not able to turn it over so that it can be sold to the customer. Because of various reasons, there could be 100 reasons for low inventory turnover rate. So in order to generate the profit, it is very important that the as fast as the transformer or any equipment for, for that matter, as soon as the raw material comes in, it should get converted into the final product, it should be pushed out of the factory. So that your inventory turnover rate is good and you are able to get back the money you invested. Then high process failure is again a big, big profit trend and uh, definitely uh, not much required to be said, we every, everyone understand about this. Next one is rework due to design, material, and work scale. This is another uh, big pain area uh, in uh, industries like transformers. Firefighting, uh, <laughs> I will not talk about much because uh, the people who are from transformers and similar industries, they understand that uh, the people are always on their toes in the factory and uh, uh, everyone is running here and there and try to meet their commitments, deliveries, starting from the deliveries, right from the issuing of the design file. So this firefighting, the root of this firefighting lies somewhere else, which uh, is not the point of discussion today, so I'm not going into that, but firefighting is a big, big profit trainer. Please understand, it is a big profit trainer. When I'm doing firefighting as a manager, as a supervisor, actually I'm not doing my job. I'm doing something else. So that needs to be understood. Then delays. Delays, of course we know delays, overproduction 
I'm not going to detail. I'm just throwing this uh, something. There could be some other time when we can uh, discuss in detail about all these uh, aspect. Overproduction, capacity mismatch is uh, another big problem where, uh, especially when a transformer or manufacturing industry is having different type of product. So product basket is big. So you have A, B, C, D, E, F, different type of products. And you, you have the one plant from where you are churning out all this variety. So if the order input is not matching with the, your uh, capacities, different product capacities, then you end up piling the inventories, uh, making customer unhappy and putting the stress on the complete manufacturing system. So that is capacity investment. It is a big, big loss. It is a big profit dinner and very great efforts required to be put in this direction. And next is the warranty cost, uh, the, which is the topic of today. Uh, small, small issues uh, crept uh, here to the site and they give big trouble because uh, a leak from a gasket can be very easily arrested in a factory in say five minutes to 10 minutes time. But the same leak when it reaches to the site, it can take even full day or more than that. Number one time, number two resources, like you may have to drain the oil, so you have to call the filtration machine. So all that cost and everything uh, related to that, you have to send the people. So if you are sending your own people from the factory, so you are taking out your skilled persons and sending them to the factory, to the site. So you are in a way indirectly affecting the performance at factory also because skilled people are not available to the job which they are supposed to do, but they are being sent to the customer site. So so many indirect uh, indirect factors related with the this aspect. So uh, after profit drainers, let's see what is the organization design uh, which is conducive to the quality or it is not so conducive to the quality. So let us see what are the quality enhancers. Organization vision, I'm just running through. Mutual trust, this is a very big uh, point. Uh, mutual trust between different departments, between people, between the sections of the organization, that is very, very important. What happens if the mutual trust is not there, then everyone is driving their own agenda own uh, plans ultimately not leading to the common goal of the organization. So that creates a lot of frictions and disturbances. Technological progress, the company, factory or organization has to be techn technological strong to ensure that the product which is coming out of the factory is excellent quality. Work culture, obviously work culture is the system. quality centricity everyone is for the quality and everyone is responsible to make a quality product that is quality centricity strong learning and development especially in engineered to order industry like transformers motors generators switch gears lot of work or i would say 90 percent of the processes are manual where skills and capability of the people is important so in such organization a very strong training knowledge management and learning and development functions have to be there skill mapping is an important tool which is which has to be very strongly practiced and implemented in such kind of organizations what are the quality destroyers in our organization quality destroyers is little respect to customer needs customers happiness is the responsibility of only the marketing department i am a production so my responsibility is to product produce, that's what I'm supposed to do. This kind of attitude can destroy the quality. Short-sighted leadership, weak quality system. So most of the transfer companies and other such companies are ISO certified. Uh, Actually, I'm sitting in a room which is uh, reasonably vacant. So you might be getting the echo. So I am keeping my voice low so that echo will be minimum. Thank you, Mr. Rao, for pointing this out. 
so weak quality system weak production planning in engineered to order factories where a lot of variables are there there will be uh, n number of designs n number of materials n number of activities so coordination becomes a very important function as such and when the planning is not strong then lot many issues including quality issues including delivery issues including warranty cost that the seed lies in improper planning with such kind of organizations so the weak production planning greatly affects the uh, performance of the quality the transformer mental blocks and working in silos i feel that my department is everything so i am working in my department i don't bother about what is happening outside of my cabin or my department so silos mentality is definitely not good for the industry we are in so let us see what are the world class quality challenges sorry world class quality means uh, when we say world class quality it in simple words it means fit it and forget it once you have displayed a transformer once it is installed and it is charged it should you shouldn't be bothered about what is happening with the transformer so you shouldn't get shouldn't get customer calls for the transformer so you should be able to forget it is fit it forget it is a slogan given by hero honda long back old days where the bikes were giving when the bikes came new and the mileage around they used to give 70 or 75 kilometers per liter so they used to say fit it and forget it is just fit it or it was fill it and forget it you fill the petrol and then you keep on driving to miles together you don't have to worry about the petrol is being exhausted so from there this term is uh, i'm taking that fit it and forget it so you don't have to uh, worry about you don't get bothered about that how my product is performing or whether it is giving me what kind of troubles so what are the uh, aspects of uh, world class quality if we say or what are the factors which makes or breaks the world class quality first is uncharted avenues okay product performance supply chain challenges challenging field service and overall technical competency competence so these four factors are responsible to make or break world class quality when i say world class quality means as a failure proof quality means my quality of the product is such that my customer complaints are zero this is another term which is quite common in transport industry that customer complaint uh, rate or number of customer complaints is a measure of uh, um, your quality level and in many organizations the customer complaint uh, data is monitored very very precisely and uh, accurately in my previous organization the customer complaint data or customer complaint closer used to be approved by the president of the company no customer complaint can be closed until unless it is seen its implementation and corrective actions are seen and get satisfied by the top most person in the company which was president so that kind of uh, culture uh, is uh, was built over there so customer complaint plays a very important role so what are the uncharted avenues when we say okay, we are getting an order uh, many times you are not clear about the customers expectations especially when we are exporting the transformers these kind of uncharted avenues we come across when we are not familiar with the conditions in which the transformer is going to be put over there and how it is going to be uh, working for example non familiar terminologies practices methods if you look about uh, abroad any country they have some different practices they have some different standards which you are not familiar with non familiar standards and codes the new documentation everyone is having their own formats own procedures own kind of reports so you are not familiar with this so that kind of, that creates delays into the decisions 
and uh, ultimately they creates a uh, disturbance in whole execution cycle of the product then coordination communication with multiple agencies especially when it is a large project or when uh, many uh, uh, parties are involved especially when export is happening so there are no more than more than two or three parties are involved companies are involved so communication becomes a challenge bringing everyone at common page and common frequency is become becomes really really challenging and that creates a lot of uh, confusions and uh, disturbances and unpleasant situations then communication with people of different origins when we are uh, say dealing in uh, africa then they have their own cultures then their own customs they have their own languages which we don't understand so when we are communicating with such people that becomes a challenge and that is where we are get we get stuck sometimes and that affects the execution of the product local operating conditions that is again something which you are not familiar with like weather altitude coercive coercivity precipitation wind storms snow dust levels uh, in my, my previous uh, days we experienced this very badly that we have we are not familiar with the environment uh, over there and the transformers face severe problems because of this uh, lack of knowledge about the weather conditions legislative laws jurisdictions are different so we are not familiar with that so this this creates a kind of a uncertainty uh, in every dealing we are doing uh, when we are trying to uh, export the transformers so this uncertainty gives us a lot of discomfort and that brings down our confidence of dealing with the situation okay so this is something which is not technical but it definitely affects the performance then second thing is product performance when we say we want to keep the warranty cost low we must have our product as failure proof so what is failure proof product we can say though it is a very very vague term very broad term it is very easy then uh, then actually doing it but yes that is the requirement that your transformer should be proven and tested it should be tested design it shouldn't be something called uh, trial and uh, uh, then you are making these kind of transformers in large numbers and you are ending up in a big uh, troubleful situation then stringent flawless manufacturing is another requirement stringent test and acceptance performance when we say thermal effect of heat internal and environmental is to be considered leakages is a big uh, pain which which gives you a very very big uh, uh, discomfort and a huge cost incurred due to leakages in the transformer i am going to cover this in great detail then weather protection and uh, minimum maintenance your transformer should uh, don't call for every often that uh, attention is given to it for any any issue or any reasons so what is presumed is there is no compromise as far as the product performance is concerned the customer is not going to uh, uh, understand or listen your excuses about why this has happened and why this has not happened so there is no compromise should be there as far as the product performance is concerned then second comes is our supply chain challenges uh first of all supplies competence is a big uh, issue sometimes when we are especially when we are supply or designing or executing an order which first time we are doing and there is a new requirement from the customer then uh, the supply competence really becomes a big hindrance first of all infrastructure is not there processes which our customer wants those processes are not there the supply is not exposed to international levels in requirement then if suppose something goes wrong then he is not equipped to provide his services to a remote location for example if i am supplying the transfer from pune probably i will find it difficult to give service in mizoram or arunachal pradesh or manipur so my supplier will not be in any condition if requirement comes he will be 
uh, interested to travel to that disc, uh, that location and resolve issues because of whatever may be the seriousness of the issue, suppliers is not uh, equipped to take care of such issues. The availability of required material is another challenge where many times the materials are not available. Or in cost, uh, when we talk about quality, the, all the discussion uh, stops at this point that the cost is very high, our material cost is very high. We cannot afford to do something uh, more which is increasing our cost. But this is a mindset. I am not saying it is not the reality, but it is also a mindset that everything shouldn't boil down to the RM cost. Then qualification of suppliers as per customer requirement. That is another, for example, if you have to first have executed an order from NTPC, you have to have the qualified supplier which is approved by NTPC. And NTPC procedures are very stringent and tough. And you actually, you get sandwiched between your supplier and your customer and uh, for getting the, your suppliers qualified. So a lot of time goes into it, a lot of efforts goes into it. And that creates some kind of uh, quality issues also. Then why your supplier should take interest into uh, improvement or giving a good quality of product or making something which is being made first time? What is his interest? What is his need? What is his ambition? Many times we find the suppliers are happy that whatever they are doing, they are content with that. So motivating such suppliers to our expectations becomes a job itself. Okay. Then when we say localization, suppose if I'm importing something and I want to localize it to reduce the cost, then obvious risks are related with that. So supply chain is uh, sometimes becomes a big issue when I think about working on my warranty cost. It is a big hindrance and a lot of work requires to be done when we talk about uh, working on the warranty cost. The challenging field service is uh, another very important area as I have given the example that by sitting in Pune or Bhopal or Baroda, I cannot give some service to uh, a location which is extreme uh, east and uh, that becomes very costly to me. So, what is what can be done is that uh, when I'm talking about erection, uh, it should be easy for the customer's project team to uh, handle so that I'm not ending up in creating issues at the customer end. So what customer is expecting is basically, we expect as I said, fit and forget. When a, when an issue comes, uh, especially when we talk about export, when we say overseas, for example, if you wish to export something to UAE or maybe to Japan, so those people are not familiar with any issues at the site. Their quality is fitted, fitted and formatted. So if any problem comes in your product, they are not prepared for, uh, for that. So they don't support you. They don't understand your problem. They don't support you most of the time and you find it very difficult. For example, if there is a small leak in a transform or welding leak and the oil is coming, say, one drop in one hour, that is a big problem to uh, your customer. And attending that leak is a very, very big issue because before attempting even that you have to go through a hell lot of procedures, approvals, and whatnot to address that problem. Okay, so customer is not ready to compromise. He is not able to uh, support you and he cannot give deviations from their safety and other procedures. So it becomes a really big challenge. And language barrier is another problem. Suppose if you go to Japan, you, you go to China, you are not able to understand their language. And cost of service because you are giving some service to a very remote location, it becomes very costly. And you don't get resources also. Yeah. If, you have, uh, if you have to attend a welding leak, you need a filter machine in say, Dubai, and you are sitting in India, you will find it extremely impossible to get 
support from local people to arrange a filter machine or arrange a welding machine. So you have it. So it is better that such situation should not come at all. So the key is building the quality at factory and not leaving any chances for the issues to come up at the site. With that, we can control our warranty cost in a big way. Resource availability and rules and regulation. And the biggest thing is the safety requirements. The safety requirements are, we are aligned to those requirements and we don't understand it, why this is required. So a lot of approvals and permits, you have to give their, you have to give the procedures, how you are going to do attend that issue. And uh, they approve that procedure and you have to follow that procedure exactly. So it uh, you are in real big soup when you are ending up with such kind of problems. So site issues are a strict no-no if you want to save on your warranty cost. Okay. Overall technical competence, we all understand that when we are taking up some order, we should be capable of delivering that product. We should be able to interpret customer needs. We should have the technical knowledge and experience. Our quality management system should be in letter and spirit. We should have adequate manufacturing setup, vendor quality and satisfaction, workmanship skill. So these are the technical competence uh, are required when we want to execute an order and we want to keep our cost. So this is basic qualification, which is expected when uh, we are working towards this objective. Now let us go into our topic that is warranty period was uh, leakage is the highest grosser then mistake safe on-site assembly is really big challenge safe shipment is is an issue and failure of accessories bottled items like temperature indicators or your relays or your air cells or your bushings all these things are fail many times and you end up in a unpleasant situation. Okay, so I'm spending some time on this topic because this is the point, this is the area which is very easy to occur but very difficult to control and leakage is something which is very very common so if you look at this photograph many people will say it is perfect transformer there is no problem is it leaking there is you can see a small patch over here that is oil which is dried off maybe some 10 days ago that oil must have come but this is a leak if you talk about your exports and overseas expectations it is a leak and if you want to attend this leak you will have a hell lot of problems so i remember whenever i talk about leak whenever i think about leak i remember a statement by my friend one of my friends and ex colleague Though he said it's very jokingly, but still it it has it carries our mindset. He said, "Are uh, oil field transformer me oil hit hota hai oil baar nahi aega to kya baar aega?" So that is though it is a very casual remark, but uh, we don't take leakage seriously. Our our customers as well as uh, we ourselves don't take the leakages very seriously. Take a leakage and we will send somebody and he will tighten something and he will come back. I think you fine. But I will tell you, the gasket, when we start leaking, you cannot arrest it by tightening it. I have been saying it so many times that uh, once the gasket is set in a groove or in a joint, it, it, it has taken its shape. So whatever amount of tightening you can do, you cannot stop the leak permanently. It will slow down, it will stop for a while, but after some time it will come up, it will come back with more vigor and more seriousness. So two types of leakages are there, gasket leak and welding leak. So let us see what are the gasket joints. I'm going a little bit into 
uh, you can say uh, small technical issues, not very complex, but I feel that this point should be driven. So I'm talking about gasket joint leak and the factors responsible for the gasket joint leak is these four. The starting point is design, the material of the gasket, process by which the gasket is being put and the wrong assembly of the thing. So let us see what is it. So when I say design, there are two types of gasket or there are four types of gasket uh, we can use and we will be coming to that. When we say nitrile or Bruna N, it is, it is typically uh, provided with a retainers like this and there is a cover. It is an illustration of a simple nitrile gasket. If you look at this, the ideal gasket design is like this, means the groom should get 100% fit with the gasket. But this is not possible to achieve. But this can be achieved. So a simple formula for this is your groove area should be 33% larger than the gasket area. And depth of the groove should be 0.8 times, I mean 20% less than the diameter of the cord which you are using. So these two uh, rules, if followed, then we can achieve this kind of gasket joint. But if it is not, then we end up having this kind of gasket. So if your nitrile cord is seen from the outside, you can assume that the gasket is not put properly. And this gasket is bound to leak. Then when we say SRBC or NRBC, so SRBC gasket is maximum allowable compression is 30%. More than that, if it is pressed, then it is bound to leak after some time. Best practices, half threaded bolt is a very good approach uh, in preventing the gasket leaks because this half threaded portion uh, sits in this uh, and the gasket actually hold that bolt. But if you're having threaded bolt, then because of these threads, the oil can see through it. I'm not saying it will seep, but the possibility of leak with full threaded bolt will be higher compared to half threaded bolts. This is the way the dotted joint should be made. Now coming to material, uh, we can use three types of uh, gaskets in a transformer. Nitrile is, is People say it is the best type of material available, but uh, it has got its own problem. The red uh, entries or red values are, are, are indication of negative aspect of this material. So more, most of the reds are in nitrile, okay? The biggest problem with the nitrile is that it has got a very poor UV resistance. So if your gasket joint is seeing the sunlight directly, sorry, if your gasket joint is exposed to direct sunlight, so you have, uh, you are exposing it to the ultraviolet rays, and the nitrile is uh, very quickly gets affected by the UV. So it is not good for the export joints. If your transformer is indoor, if the joints are not getting exposed to the sunlight, then nitrile works vulnerable. Nitrile requires precisely machine matting surfaces and so you need to have grooves, you need to have retainers and all those things. It is a very tough, so you cannot cut it manually. You can cut, but it is not easy to cut. You require high skill to make a nitrile joint and cost is higher. It is the highest uh, material for the gasketing. Okay. SRBC is our normal core gasket, which is good for a normal transformer and it works well for minus 40 to 110 degrees centigrade. It has got excellent UV resistance, so you can put it anywhere. Uh, sunlight or no sunlight is going to work. It requires normal wetting surface, a simple curve made from uh, ready made MS flat also works well with the 
or gasket. It is very easy to make cutting, punching very easy. It requires a very low skill and but sealing quality is average. It is not, you are not getting the excellent joint which you normally get with the nitrate gasket. Cost is, it is cheapest and the life is moderate. On the contrary, if you see the NRDC, it is something in between cork and the nitrate. So this can work minus 5 to 110 degrees centigrade. So if you wish to use this with uh, uh, K-class liquids and the transformer is designed for a temperatures more than 120 degrees centigrade, then you cannot use NRBC. In that case, you have to use nitrate gaskets only. It is having good UV resistance, so you can reasonably use in the exposed atmosphere. Wetting surface, it requires normal. You don't have to go for the groove kind of thing. You don't have to go for precisely machine surfaces. Uh, cutting is moderately easy uh, compared to nitrile, and then you require low skill. Silly quality is good. It is not bad, and cost is moderate, and life is also moderate. So if you have to make a choice, then uh, you can go for NRBC gaskets which are uh, easily available and any good gasket supplier can provide you. Okay, then these are the different uh, gasket materials depending upon their strength. So you can see here, it is just for the academic interest. Uh, racket ball is, is having show zero, 00 at 35. If you look at our non NRBC or sorry, nitrile o -ring, it is having 70 show as strength, okay. If you look at the bowling ball, it is shoulder at 55. So likewise, it is the hardness of different gasketing materials or rubber materials are indicated over here. Okay. So when we stop our process, uh, I'm not going into too much detail. I, I, I would only like to talk, show you a video over here, which is uh, about uh, how you can make the O-rings from the uh, nitrile. Let me see whether the video can be played or not. Are you able to see video? Yeah. I hope you are able to see the video. Ramis, can you confirm video C? In this video, they are, they are showing How to make a, a, a o-ring? The cutting of the o-ring is very important. So, if you don't have a tool like this, but you can have something similar to this. Please see that he is using a sharp knife and a tool to cut it. And then we see, you please see that he is using a very small drop of Loctite because when Loctite gets hardened, it becomes plastic and it is not flexible. It is plastic, it becomes very hard. 
So if too much lactate is applied, the gasket joint becomes a plastic joint and it won't get compressed when it is put in the groove and it starts leaking from the joint itself. Though the joint is not broken, but because of excessive loctite, you have made the joint plastic, so it's lost its elasticity. Okay, so this is uh, about video, thank you. So now when we say about assembly of the nitrile cords, uh, these are some points like cords should not get twisted into the group. As I said, loctite should be used very minimum. And then uh, uh, sometimes the cord gets pinched between the flanges and it starts leaking from there. Uh, spring washer and nut bolts are to be used. And tightening sequence, I have shown here, this is a tightening sequence which should be followed when we are tightening a gasket joint. and torque tightening should be done based on these values of the torque. When you are using a car gasket or NRBC gasket, there are different tools are available to make the dovetail joint. These tools should be used, not normal knife or screwdriver or other such uh, innovative methods should be used to make the joint. This rubber-based rubberized adhesive SPV7 and other many other such things are available. Fevigol SR998 also can be used in place of this. But the advantage of this is it is it is a flexible like rubber, so it gives you great gasket quality, joint quality. Okay. Again, the same torque will use the same tightening torque. Uh, the gaskets are perishable items, they become hard with time. So you can do this small uh, check, hardness check of the gasket. If the gasket is cracking after bending this around a 20 mm diameter rod, if it is breaking, then you can consider the gasket is old and you can throw that gasket away. Now coming to welding joints, weld joints uh, can leak because of design and because of process. And weld leak joints are most difficult to attend at site and they cost heavily. So any transformer leaking, at the joint, welding joint is not acceptable uh, if you are to really control your warranty cost. So major causes due to design, uh, it, is a, it is a predicament uh, with uh, our uh, mechanical designers that a transfer mechanical design, I'm very sorry to say, is, is not designed, it is basically drafting activities. So designers should have a knowledge of welding process he should have a knowledge of metal working. He should have knowledge of stresses. He should have knowledge of force distribution. All these mechanical concepts are to be known to the mechanical designer. He shouldn't be only expert in using AutoCAD or other drafting tools. So when he has that knowledge, he will be able to design a weld joint properly. Okay, raw material selection, plate thickness, changes can lead to the uh, many mechanical defects. If site conditions are not understood or not considered, that can cause problem in the transformer at site. Too narrow factor of safety, keeping the sheet thickness very low to save the cost, where 8 mm plate should be used, I am using 6 mm plate, where 3 mm plate should be used, I am using 1.2 mm plate uh, thickness plate. Such kind of practices to cut down the cost. Immediately the effect is not seen, but ultimately uh, in long run, when you are giving a guarantee of uh, six years or 10 years, all these issues will going to come and they will cost heavily, okay? Welded joints have to be kept minimum. There are various ways to reduce the welded joints and those practices to be followed. Okay. Complicated shapes, uh, uh, you can see uh, awkwardly designed cable boxes, you can see awkwardly designed tanks, all these to save the cost, Complication in the shapes lead to, because the welder has to do the things with more skill and there the sometimes issue comes and because of complication design, your transformer creates side issues. Some approaches, simulation has to be done uh, by using FEM or NCS tools that can give you where the stresses is more, where the uh, welding joint is not good, and all these kind of things you can identify while doing this simulation. Standardization is a very good way to reduce the efforts and to uh, running the risk of doing something 
new every time. So if you have standard designs, then you are proving those designs with time and the issues will not come too much. Then training on structural design, welding technology to design this is must and which must be given. Uh, we also provide training on the welding technology. We have our, uh, experts who have spent their life in 30 years in training on the tra welding. Uh, we can provide the training to the mechanical designers, to quality supervisors, as well as to actual welders to uh, uh, equip them with a good amount of knowledge on this field. Okay. Fabrication, when we say uh, many times process and personnel are not qualified, inadequate assembly equipment, barricades are not there, jigs and fixtures are not designed, uh, or if they, they are there, they are, uh, they are not at all uh, suitable for the purpose which they are supposed to be. Then a lot of time, too much handling of the uh, tank also creates problem and causes damages to it. Surface treatment process is uh, a very well-known area and uh, there is no need to be said more about it. Uh, wrong process selection, where you should go for SMW, where you should go for ting welding, where you should do ming welding, all this knowledge is essential in order to make a leak-proof uh, joint. Okay. Uh, many fabrication shop you will find the lighting is not poor, the place is very dirty, the debris is lying everywhere. So in such a place, how can you expect that a good product will come out? So we'll take leak test before and after primer is one good approach by that you can prevent the leakage of the tank. Hydraulic leak test, which is done by uh, one or two tank manufacturers in India is a very effective way to identify leakages in the uh, transformer. Some people do kerosene spray uh, to identify the minute leakages from the welding joints. And uh, uh, one, uh, the one gentleman uh, is here in today's session in whose company this kerosene spray I have seen with my own eyes. Uh, it is being done. It is very effective to identify the leakages in the fabrication stage. And complete assembly of the tank before leak test is very, very important, especially when you are making large power transformers. Okay, so now let us move to the mistakes of on site assembly. It is a big challenge uh, because you supply the transformer to the site and uh, you face uh, the customer or the contractor or the uh, election people direct the uh, transformer as per their knowledge and understanding. There are many times issues uh, get transferred from the factory to the site and you end up in uh, such painful uh, points where your wall can crack or the pipe is not matching or such kind of issues uh, get come. So what to do in such situation? Uh, this is yesterday's, uh, we got these photographs uh, yesterday only. You can see here, this metal part was bent and uh, this has must have happened when the erection was happening of this transformer and the contractor must have mishandled it and this metal part got bent. Now, uh, the customer wanted to get it replaced. So, uh, we have to send our engineer he has gone there. Now you, you know you can imagine for such a small problem, what, what level of expenses are going to happen. I had sent my engineer. It is a corona time, so we are not sending out people by public convenience. So we have provided a private taxi to my engineer. He has gone there. The site was far, so he had to stay over, stay over there during the night. So that expense, hotel expenses. Then uh, he has uh, removed this metal part. So oil was drained, so filtration machine was required. Now this metal part is braced inside, brazing is done. So he used to brace it, so the gas, gas brazing set is required. Okay, adequate skill is required. And then risk is also there because I'm doing activity, brazing activity, which is supposed to be done in the factory, but I have to do it at site. So that risk is also there. When I'm doing brazing, on a transformer which is ready, I am running a big risk of fire also. Okay, now all these things have been done. So much cost has gone into it only because it was not handled by the site team properly. Now another aspect of problem which can cause during later time, you see this, the size of the hole in the lug and the stud metal part. This is a current carrying portion. How much uh, heating is going to happen 
at this joint during the service of the transformer. No wonder that after a year or so, uh, again a complaint will come that the metal part is overheating and uh, you have to replace that metal part. Or maybe transformer can fail with this. So all is such small, small issues, very small issues, give big pain to us. So side crew is ignorant, side crew is untrained, assembly instructions are missing, vague and eligible. Before I raise my finger to the side crew, am I ensuring that that my my uh, instructions are clear in assembling the transformer? Most of the time, those are missing, or these are vague, or these are not el eligible. A person cannot go through those instructions. Okay. Now joints are stressed like this. If you can see this. If this is not done properly, the cable can pull the bushing down and the bushing will fail. Inadequate tools and equipment at site. Many times scrimping is done by very crude way, by sometimes hammer and <laughs> screwdriver and all those things are used. So that can create problem. Gaskets are reused. I'm sending loose pipe connections with blank plate and gaskets. Those gaskets are to be thrown away and new gaskets are to be used. Am I supplying spare gaskets with my transformer? So that always a fresh gasket is used and the leak will not happen. Okay. Mounting assembly check not done at works before shipment. So when you are not checking it, all the possibilities there at the site, the mismatch will happen. If you are not done the match marking on the components, all the possibility is that those, uh, those components will not match at site. And many kind of complications can come because of that. So let us see what can be done uh, to avoid a wrong assembly at site. Very easy point one, maximum component you mount on the transformer and ship it, so nothing will go wrong. Training by videos, website, blog post, okay. This is a very effective tool that a lot of information should be provided on the websites. Blog post is another excellent way and videos is a most effective tool if you want to train the people who are not physically near you. So videos can be done. They provide exploded views of assembly. Simulation can be an option, okay. Recommended tools and equipment list should be given along with the transformer or the equipment. Clearly marked lifting and handling points so that something is not lifted at a wrong point and it will break off or it will cause damage to the property and person. Some severe accident can happen. Adjustable flanges, below flexi coupling for pipes, fresh well gasket, you talked about match marking during factory assembly. So let us see some approaches, exploded views, such kind of exploded views are provided, especially uh, like your pipe connections, for example, where Bokol delay and your uh, shut off walls and uh, bent pipe, etc. you remove and then send it. Such kind of exploded views can be provided so that it is easy for someone to assemble at site. The match marking is another very effective way where you can mark like this, so that at site when somebody is assembling it, he can use, identify these match marks and redo the assembly at site. It can be applied on flanges of pipe oil pipes, multiple joint of pipelines, cable box covers, number punches also can be done, but number punches sometimes can be misleading. So clear cut uh, match marking, just a line on something is much, much useful than giving number punches, okay? Third approach is designing something which is mistake proof. So nobody can put it in a wrong way. So it is called Kokayo. It is a Japanese concept we all know that these plug sockets, you can see that you cannot put these plug socket in any other way than they are supposed to be. You can break your head, but you will not be able to put it in any other way. So design should be such that no mismatching is possible. Okay, I could not understand this image when we all started, when I was searching for Kokayo. Okay? I got this image under Pokai, okay. What, what, what it is talking here, it is very simple talking. When a person is inside the washing machine, the washing machine will not start. The interlocking is done of the door. 
so that your machine will not start. So it is also a poka yoke. Now we see all these things in our day to day life, but in few years ago, these were something which were or innovation now it is a part of our life okay so we can do poka yoke for flanges of oil pipes multiple joint of pipelines cable box covers and again same thing it is getting number punches can be another approach is providing adjustable flanges and couplings you can do it for uh, there is they provide you some kind of flexibility and they also stress keep the joint stress free such kind of adjustable flanges where you can rotate and align it. This is also a way of uh, uh, bringing flexibility into uh, the jointing of the uh, pipelines and couplings. Then uh, these bellows or flexible hoses can be provided where you feel that uh, there could be chance of mismatch when somebody is assembling that side. Another approach is providing simulation videos. This is again a video which uh, I will try to run. Such kind of videos can be made and uh, given to customers through various means. You can see this video. Sorry. The simple robot. And such kind of videos anybody can understand any layman can understand that how the assembly is to be done okay short videos very easily can be made but very very useful to avoid small small problems at the site you can do for radiator banks you can go for pipelines buffer relays heat exchangers thermosiphon online filters cable boxes your termination everywhere you can provide such kind of videos Okay, now coming to the next uh, factor, which is safe shipment. Safe shipment is something which is uh, an area where we have very little control on it. Here, I, I, just for a fun part, I am showing this video. So, try to try to making the atmosphere a little bit light. This is our favorite Jim Carrey, and he is here a courier boy. And uh, what can happen to your consignment? It is little bit exaggerated, but uh, some truth is there in that, that your transformer also can get subjected to such kind of treatment. Whatever amount of care you can give, but if the shipping agency is not careful, then it can cause a big damage to your transformer or your product. <laughs> Okay. Tomorrow, don't uh, ban your uh, transporter after seeing this video. Our transporters are not so dumb, so they are smarter than this guy, but it can happen like this. Okay, so I'm stopping over here. So what can, what can affect our shipment? Shipment can get dropped because of some accident, vibrations during the shipment, shocks, jerks, compression on all sides from indiscriminate stacking, and then temperature and humidity changes during when particularly when the C shipment is going on. So the point what, which I want to drive over here is packing is a technology. Okay, like uh, in our context, the painting is uh, uh, is uh, you can say taken very casually. Similarly, packing is also taken in a very lighter way. Well, nothing is there in the packing. What is so great? But believe me, there is an institute, Indian Institute of Packaging, which is having head office in Mumbai, and they are having their branches in Delhi, Hyderabad, Chennai, Kolkata, and Ahmedabad. They are 50 year old organization solely working on packing technology. 
Okay, you see tetrapack and all those things. These were developed by this uh, this institute, and they are their in-house experts. They can come to your factory, your industry. They can consult you. They can guide you. They can devise your packing, design your packing, so that it is more scientifically and technologically taken care of. Okay. There are also degree diploma and certificate courses are available in India on packing technology. Okay, so packing of export especially to be taken very very seriously and it is to be designed scientifically under expert guidance. They can send people to you uh, expert and uh, they can suggest you is uh, for a particular consignment also they can help you in uh, designing your packing so that all those uh, shocks and uh, transit issues can be taken care of very effectively. Uh, what can happen during long, uh, due to wrong shipment is movement of CCA in the tank, bushings can damage, your paint can damage, breakage of delicate items like scent, loose like porcelain radiators, they can break, bushings can break, wall handle can go off. These are some small issues which normally happens. This is a very costly item, this bushing is you know very costly and it just these two petticoats got broken, the whole bushing is useless. These are delicate corrugations, something hit it and uh, it has gone now. This is powder coated panel, a small scratch, the transshipment movement in, the, in this thing, the components are falling off from the panel. So these kind of issues can come during this thing. What could be some of the causes? Is uh, like the CCA is not locked properly, design is not correct, or workmanship is not correct so that CCA is free to move inside the tank. Packing, of course, is this thing. Container stuffing and destuffing. Stuffing is in your control. You can stuff the container with utmost care, but destuffing is not always done properly, especially when you are um, ship, shipping it to the countries which are not economically advanced, like Africa. African countries, there could be some dis, uh, I mean, mishandling of uh, things are possible. So during destuffing or unloading of the container also, damage can happen. Transshipment in India, this is a typical problem that the transporter shift your consignment from one truck to another truck just to save some money, and that causes a big amount of damage to the district. Then shocks in transit, you can see here how these containers are uh, about to fall in the sea because of the movement of the ship. And this can, you can imagine what kind of shocks are getting transmitted to the transformer if it is traveling in a ship like this. Okay, then handling and storage site, many times sites are not ready. Your transformer and components are kept in the open. The grass grows around, the moisture goes into it, water gets accumulated, and all that creates big kind of problem for you. Okay, now coming to failure of accessories and bottles. So what are the challenges? Uh, leakages from tap switches, PRVs, radio walls, metal parts, bushing is a very common problem. Epoxy bushings, I have covered this topic in my previous program, so I will not touch it. Corrosion rusting, bushing clamps, hardware, cable trays, metal parts, all these things get rusted uh, in due amount of time. Coating the triturated powder coated panels are uh, uh, you can say they are notorious for getting rusted uh, because of uh, not proper uh, process or the wrong selection because powder coated panels or powder coated equipment are not suitable for highly corrosive atmosphere. So if you are doing powder coating for, for something which is uh, going for a location where uh, salty atmosphere is there, then your powder coated coating is going to give you trouble. Okay. The seizing of SS hardware is another problem. Your SS hardware gets seized and no amount of efforts can uh, loosen that hardware. You have to ultimately cut it. The anti-theft requirements on walls and other items which customer wants some time and providing those anti-theft requirement can be a challenge, okay? The sharp edges on punched washers, this is a very small issue, but can create damage of the paint and from there the rusting can start. You now you can imagine a 50 paisa washer can damage your uh, transformer cover of the tank body severely and from there a leakage can, uh, sorry, a rusting can start and it can spread throughout. 
okay and the bigger and the damage can be very very severe so oem manuals providing in local language is a big challenge and uh, it has to be complied because it is a requirement of the customer so these are some challenges which are peculiar and has to be handled when we are talking about uh, sending the transformer overseas or to the remote areas of in our own country also okay so oil leakage from borings uh, this is some causes that in fact we discussed this uh, the all black is not night time especially when you are getting the metal parts and the o-ring supplied along with the metal part by the metal part supplier are normally are not of good quality so it is better to purchase the o-ring separately and metal part separately so that you are sure that what you are purchasing at what you are putting all black is not night time or new black misalignment of shafts and strain on the shaft that is another reason of o-rings and poor quality of component itself is not of good quality so the best idea is that uh, go for high quality of accessories a nose testing setup should be established like for the walls ready to wall or globe walls uh, even prvs focus relays wherever the oil is going the leak testing setup is to be established for these components okay so that you are ensuring that at least from pourings the leakage will not happen okay epoxy bushing leakage we have covered already in our previous program so i'm just skipping it corrosion rusting is uh, sometimes we uh, make mistake in selecting right grade of ss hardware all ss is not rust proof okay and substandard coating and plating on the hardware also can create the problem and vendor quality uh, of uh, supplied item is can be an issue okay for hardware testing in house testing of component salt salt bath uh, facility can be there it is very simple to do but it can give you a lot of comfort when you are doing it in house then purchase from uh, standard vendor high quality vendor is a right policy in order not to cut corners not to save money by taking in the material from the inferior quality vendors uh, and that will save you a lot of pain later on and specify your coating and plating requirement so that you are 100% sure that what you are getting is as per your expectation branded hardware is another like unbreaker you can use or tvs hardware can be used where you can be sure of the quality of the hardware okay powder coated panels uh, as i said they are not required for corrosive suitable for corrosivity level surface treatment and coating process play a very important role okay so auto ferritic coating is one solution uh, if you want to go for a powder coated where there is a kind of primer is applied on the on the panel body and uh, this is normally used in automobiles that's why you can find that automobile paint quality is excellent and normally they won't rust easily so this is a video where uh, this uh, auto ferritic coating process is being shown briefly okay this uh, coating the component coated with auto ferritic can easily pass 1000 hours plus salt uh, salt bath test and nothing happens uh, to these kind of uh, uh, components so you can see in this video uh, now the process is being shown here it is a uh, eight tank process uh, uh, different than seven tank there is one extra eighth tank for providing auto ferritic coating so this component is going into that uh, tank okay so it will come here after coating you will see that uh, it is the gray colored steel surfaces will become black so auto ferritic coated surfaces will be black uh, colored okay so that is a way uh, to identify this thing and on after this coating you can do the powder coating the way you are doing uh, regularly so if you do this then your powder coated panels are very very less likely to get rusted and uh, the, the normal you can see here now it is a black colored things okay it is auto ferritic coated and uh, this will give you a very long life of uh, your powder coated components okay.
other challenges like seizing of ss hardware it is a mechanical phenomena and uh, when you are using ss hardware it is advisable to use ltc's compound uh, which is available of loctite also that can be applied on the this thing anti theft requirements uh, these are to be complied as because customer is asking for it sharp edges on the point washer we have discussed it is branded fastener is a good solution for that and uh, oem manuals in local language at point of use uh, has to be done levels and identification of local languages it is a customer applied need it must be complied so these are were some other points which i wanted to cover up so with this uh, uh, i am coming to the end of the program uh, i mean the uh, content of today and now i am uh, sharing a brief information about different solution uh, which we provide uh, other than transformers i mean that is instructors of course this is for transformer and uh, uh, we represent savita and uh, i am particularly i am personally a consultant to savita oil technologies and where we uh, i help them in uh, uh, propagating and uh, technically uh, explaining the application of uh, synthetic and natural esters our second uh, the solution is online moisture management from streamer electric switzerland this is uh, different than uh, conventional offline filtration where you have to shut down the transformer and do the filtration during that time the transformer is not available for service and you are ending up with a lot of big huge production loss during that time this is online filtration system which you can put on the transformer and uh, it will keep on uh drying the oil as well as insulation and over a long uh, run of uh, period you will find that your transformer is really running totally dry so the filtration cycles conventional filtration cycles will not be required after you put this system maybe after one or two years the filtration is not required okay the second uh, third is our uh, motorway make digital multi monitor of uh, transformers which is a io cloud based uh, monitoring system which takes uh, signals and inputs from existing transformer devices and collect this data and converts it into uh, smart information which can be used on your laptop and your other devices uh, for analysis and quick decisions then we have this very unique uh, system uh, from streamer again it is a five test it is fire purification system it is a signal gas based technology where these stickers are uh, designed with uh, encapsulated uh, uh, gas bubbles uh, on those gas bubbles burst at the activation temperature which can be 80 to 100 130 degree centigrade when the activation temperature reaches of this sticker then the gas gets bursted which is sensed by this uh, uh, fire protection alarm and you get a alarm which is uh, which can be transmitted to your system through this controller box Uh, on your mobile as well as on your SCADA or wherever you want to use it, so that you can uh, prevent your fire uh, by identifying the loose contacts much much earlier than the actual event of failure. So it's a very wonderful solution which can help actually containing the fire incidences and damage to the property. Okay, with this uh, we are coming to our question and answer session. If we have some questions, we can take it up. and uh, i would be very happy to answer those let me see the chat box i am very sorry there was a lot of echo because uh, this room is quite big and uh, it is vacant so because of that uh, some echo is coming so uh, i am very sorry for that i would try to improve next time uh, and i would see that i am in a better place so that uh, this problem will not come now there is a question from mr p sharma that uh, what are the site conditions to be considered to design weld joints okay in raj sorry In Rajasthan, 315 MVA, 400 220 kV transformer has been failed due to three-phase short circuit at 220 kV side. Three-phase fault was cleared in 59 millisecond, but transformer failed. As per analysis, one-phase winding damaged, OLTC damaged, and 
tank of transformer burst from bottom is it technically feasible for uh, repair of uh, this transformer okay see uh, in this particular example mr sharma uh, uh, this transformer weld joint has it seems given up because of pressure build up and uh, normally uh, when we see uh, we provide a, a pressure relief device on the transformer and this that device operates normally it operates but if the fault uh, as you also know if the fault is uh, rising up very fast so pressure development is very fast and many times because every device is having its response time so prv if the rate of fault is faster than the prv's response then definitely it will uh, exert pressure on other part and probably that's why the transformer must have uh, busted okay so uh, must be some welding joint uh, as you said that what are the side conditions to be considered to design welding joints see uh, this is something which is uh, Uh, as i said uh, uh, there are various simulation tools are available like uh, ansys can be used uh, to identify the stresses being uh, developed into it and the stress analysis of the joints has to be done probably there could be some inherent uh, design issue of the transformer tank which is uh, which led to this problem so especially many companies are doing this analysis they have got their own software and they are doing this stress analysis on these programs and they are taking uh, proper uh, care in designing this transformer now you are asking is it technically feasible for repair of this transformer it's very difficult to say by, uh, by without looking at the details of the failure but uh, uh, should be possible to repair but again Uh, the way you are explaining the OLTC damage and tank got busted, so uh, the great amount of damage must have happened to the windings as well as uh, other internal core structure also. So without looking at the things, it is very difficult to say something what a feasibility of the repair of this transformer. If you can share some photographs or something, then probably I can uh, look into it and uh, revert back on that. Uh, okay that was the only question uh, from uh, mr sharma thank you so much sharma ji for your question and uh, uh, if any other questions are there we can take it up i am very happy today to note that the participation in today's program uh, is i mean ratio registration to participation ratio is today not very great but it is more than 50% so uh, that that's a great relief to us and uh, i request uh, many people are uh, now regular to this program and that is an indication that uh, they are uh, you are liking uh, what we are doing so my humble request is uh, to you to kindly spread uh, the news about this program our efforts what we are doing and kindly spread uh, the messages what i normally put on the whatsapp groups to your network to your people and recommend this program so that uh, this information can reach to the wider uh, spectrum wider uh, number of people and they can get benefited uh, balasubramanian ji thank you for uh, your comments and uh, uh, now coming to uh, next week what we are going to offer you again a very wonderful uh, program is there in next next week which is by an expert on transformer oil testing mr mohit kumar of ketek oil laboratories and uh, he is going to uh, come on the platform and he is going to talk on transformer oil testing requirements importance and consequences this is a two part program and uh, part one is going to happen on next wednesday we are going to float the registration link very fast maybe in a day or two so that you can register and uh, please do come in this program also many such programs many such eminent people are uh, being uh, pulled in to this uh, webinar and in coming days you are going to be uh, you are going to have a treat of knowledge on different aspects 
and I'm sure you're going to like it and uh, appreciate it. So uh, with this, thank you so much for your participation. This is my mobile number and my email ID. And uh, uh, I am thankful for the participation and your appreciation and love to us. Thank you so much. Any other question if uh, somebody is having or else we can close. Ramiz? No, sir, there is no questions in the chat box. Thank you, Raju, sir, for wonderful presentations. Okay, then, so bye-bye uh, yeah. for now. See you next week on the same time, same Wednesday. And uh, please do come and uh, see what we are going to talk about the oil testing as such in the that program and make it successful. Thank you so much. See you. Good night. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nasha for your comments. Thanks, you liked it.